Good afternoon. Thanks for spending your Monday afternoon with us. I'm Kim Christensen. I'm Tom Green. And weather the story today in Colorado is a big state. There's plenty going on in the metro area. Very breezy, very windy all through the day. But on the right side of your screen, we're looking out to the west where a lot of snow and low visibility is causing a different sort of problem. As a matter of fact, taking a live look at the Eisenhower Johnson Tunnel, CDOT now reporting I-70 has opened in both directions through the tunnel where they had had a power outage earlier. It is now closed between Silverthorne and Loveland, though, due to conditions there. So, of course, there's much to cover from the weather up there. Live team coverage this afternoon, Janelle Finch talking to a homeowner who dealt with a downed tree in her yard. We want to start with our chief meteorologist, Kathy Sabin, tracking the forecast and just a miserably windy day today, Kathy. It is miserable, but it's also dangerous and damaging and will continue for several more hours. The wind and the snow creating travel issues over some of our higher passes, as you might imagine. High wind warning out tonight. Winds will decrease a little bit tonight, only to return for some areas is tomorrow. And yes, Tom mentioned snow, a winter weather advisory for mountain snow. But today it's all about the wind. Still looking at gusts to almost 60 miles per hour in Broomfield. DIA winds to 40, 50 miles per hour today. Gusty winds out of the west, all part of an area of low pressure that is moving over northern Colorado. High wind warning the area in purple. High wind watch the area in yellow. Gusty winds could blow to 75 miles per hour between now and sunset. Set. And again, that snow, something we're tracking behind me. They're tracking tornadic thunderstorms across Nebraska and Kansas tonight, all part of the system that's bringing the damaging winds to us today. Severe weather threat extreme from Omaha to Wichita. The severe weather threat is low in Colorado. Our temperatures are coming down with the passage of a front. We're in the mid 50s this hour and the wind really continues to be the big story. Some improvement after sunset tonight, but some wind wind back in the forecast tomorrow. I'll have the timing coming up. OK, Kathy, that wind has caused all sorts of damage on the roads and into the airport as well. An empty trailer tipped over on I-70 near West 38th in Wheat Ridge. No one was hurt. Police moved it to the shoulder. For now, though, the wind flipped over a plane at Centennial Airport this morning. Jeff Greenstein says the blue and white plane flipped over. And that was his. The airport says the 12 parked aircraft had some sort of damage. The airport saw a 70 mile an hour wind gust this morning. Right now, CDOT is working to determine how, um, what caused a highway sign structure to actually fall on southbound I-25. It happened before 5 a.m. when the winds really got going. The sign caused a complete closure of southbound 25 at 58th Avenue during the morning rush hour. Adams County Fire tells us a semi couldn't stop in time and the semi damaged damaged the front of the the sign damaged the front of the semi. No one was hurt. Crews had to cut the structure into pieces, though, so it could be hauled away. So it took about five hours to get the lanes reopened. The wind has been a nuisance, but it's really causing lots of problems and some damage as well, blowing things all over the city, including taking down some big trees. Yeah, it's a nuisance if you're just walking around. But if a big tree falls, uh, that's more than a nuisance. The one family did avoid significant damage. Still a loss, though. And 9 News reporter Janelle Finch joins us live in Denver. She's been looking at some of the wind damage today. Hi, Janelle. Hi, Tom and Kim. We found homeowners today in Park Hill who had a really close call when a large tree fell down in their front yard. Luckily, it only dinged a neighborhood watt sign, but they still could feel the impact. High winds in the Denver Metro. Thank God he's a lumberjack. <laughs> have Park Hill homeowners Andy and Anna Parker making peace with loss. I guess we're going to have to plant a new one. <laughs> <laughs> the couple abandoned their Monday routines when an emergency called them home. We got a call from our neighbor that our tree had blown across the street and we're like, oh God, which tree? Strong winds uprooted a large pine in the Parker's front yard. I don't know what the winds were here today, but uh, obviously they were pretty strong because this tree's been up here for probably at least uh, 75 at years. At least 75 years. And down with it. We should get those off. <laughs> Memories. Junior school art projects. <laughs> Our kids made them in kindergarten and first grade. Another stake to the heart. It's kind of sad. It was one of the anchors. <laughs> and not, not a good anchor now. <laughs> Their home was spared, but branches and a tree trunk blocked the sidewalk and road. Oh, that would be great. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. So the Parkers called for help. Here he comes. <laughs> 
the first step in cleanup, and a new cycle of life for the Parkers. Now on the bright side, the couple does plan on saving two logs from that down tree to add to their son's motorcycle course that they've built themselves in their front yard. Live in Denver, Janelle Finch, 9 News. Making the most of it, but that's still, it's hard to see every time. The trees are just all green right now. Right. They're all budding. Oh, tough stuff. Catching a lot of wind. All right, Janelle, thanks. We'll check back with you in just a bit. Of course, one area we know that's going to see very high winds always does. Highway 93 over there in the foothills. A live look at the CDOT cameras there. Our Corey Repenhagen is going to be joining us in a little bit from there as well, giving us a better idea of why Denver is so windy. Mm. 